Thank you for joining us. We are here on location at the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida for the FETC conference. The future of education is a cause today that is greater than ever, and we will get in-depth opinions and views on this subject matter following these messages. We started with a blank slate, and then we added you, because you wanted a tablet that felt perfect in your hands, dual cameras so you can capture everything, you wanted Beats Audio, and a tablet that runs Android, the most popular mobile operating system in the world. Introducing the Slate 7 from HP, the game-changing 7-inch Android tablet. Because for you, getting it exactly right matters. With us now is Tom Whitby, Hi, Tom. How are you? Good. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. Thank Tell you for us about having yourself here. here. Well, I'm, I'm here at FETC, which was originally the, uh, I think it was the Florida uh, Education Technology Conference. Now they've changed it to the Future of um, Education and Technology Conference, which is a significant change. But we're here in Florida with um, several thousand educators talking about uh, technology in education and, and how it's affecting things. Um, where I come from, uh, I'm... Pretty much at, at this point in time, I'm a retired educator, 40 years in the classroom, both wow. um, uh, working from middle school into uh, high school, and I did six years as a, as a professor in higher ed, um, and all the time in the classroom. So I've been working with students and with teachers in, in educating and professional development for teachers. Uh, what I do now is I'm involved very much in social media and using social media as a, a means of professional development for teachers to become what we refer to as connected educators. Uh, the, the idea of connected educators is to, to break down um, the barriers of both time and space so that, that teachers can connect and collaborate at any time, at any place, with educators around the world. And, and that's the idea that, that will get us uh, into the, the 21st century and out of the 19th and 20th century that, that where we were res restricted by buildings and restricted by classrooms. Excellent. Now you mentioned social media. What are some of the platforms that you're referring to? When we refer to social media, there, there are several platforms that uh, enable teachers, not teachers, anybody, to, uh, to engage in discussion and, and to collaboratively learn. The, the idea of uh, collaborative learning is, is one that um, is moving into what we do. We've, we've always had collaboration, but collaboration in the past has always had to be face-to-face. -face. In order to collaborate, you had to be in the same space as the person with whom you would want to collaborate. Technology has, has moved that forward in that we no longer have to worry about that space. You and I can collaborate, you being in Florida and me being in New York, we can collaborate at any time by using technology. And we could use Google Hangouts, we could use Skype, we could use Twitter, we could use LinkedIn, we could use um, um, even bookmarking so sources like Delicious or um, you know, a a any sources that enable us to contact each other and engage. So, so that's the social media that we're, we're, we're talking about. Probably the, the backbone for developing any PLN, a PLN would be a personal learning network. Uh, a network of people that help guide my personal learning would not be the same people that would help guide your personal learning. So a PLN, personal learning network, would be different for everybody, kind of like a snowflake. There are no sure. two that are alike. Um, and, and when educators engage in um, developing their own learning, they take ownership of that learning and it becomes a much more meaningful thing. Collaborative learning uh, enables us to learn in, in a much deeper level than if we were being lectured to or, or by using direct instruction. So the, the idea of collaboration has, has moved up the scale of, of um, acceptance for methodology in education. Interesting. I see a parallel between the type of learning that you're referring to, this collaborative learning using uh, technology and social media, I see a parallel between that type of learning and the type of pedagogy that teachers are expected to facilitate within their classrooms. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about um, not only the teachers learning the content and the, the pedagogy, but also bettering themselves in their facilitation of, of that in the yeah, classroom? I, I, you know, 
as teachers, one of the, the pitfalls in education is that uh, when, when educators think about becoming educators, um, they know that they have to go to school. So they, they get their degree and then they get their license and then they get a job. And, and, and then many of them say, this is it. I've accomplished what I had to accomplish. And they sit back and think, this is, you know, is going to carry me through life. Well, it doesn't. Um, the idea that, that information changes so rapidly and increases at such a rate that in order to stay relevant, we have to be connected. Um, if, in fact, and, and we talked about this before, if, in fact, uh, as an educator, if, if I've got a class of students in front of me and I give them all of the knowledge in my head, I am limiting them to what it is they should have access to. They need access to all that information that is constantly changing, and they need the skills to access that information. They need the skills to analyze that information, to critically analyze that information, and the skills to create other information to exchange out for collaboration. Those are the 21st century skills that we talk about. And the tools, and the tools to do that too, so. And, and the tools are constantly changing. Yes. Um, I received a master's degree in, in, in educational technology, and all of the hardware and all of the software that I learned on to attain that degree no longer exists. So in order for me to stay relevant, I need to be connected with the very people that are doing the things that I'm doing so I can gain from them whatever successes that they've had and I can avoid the failures that, that they've experienced. I've attended several workshops already and the, the information is overwhelming. But I feel that, you know, as educators, we owe it to, to our students. We owe that to them to stay on that cutting edge. That's, uh, you know, the, what you're saying right yes. now is one of the biggest deterrents uh, to educators becoming connected. Because one of the things, I, I, I often say that, that the worst advocates for connected educators are connected educators. They tend to uh, get very excited about their connection. They get excited about their collaboration. And when they're talking to unconnected educators, they tend to overwhelm them with all of their successes. And an unconnected educator listening to this is intimidated and overwhelmed by all of that information that's being thrown at them. And they say, I'll never do this in a million years, so let me just stay away from it. Um, but, but we have to find a way to connect those unconnected educators because the discussions that we have as connected educators are six months to a year in advance of the discussions that are going on in faculty rooms and faculty meetings um, because the thought leaders in education, the authors um, of, of educational books right now are involved in being connected. They're leading the way with their ideas. And, and in social media, titles are, are, are non-existent. People are accepted for their ideas. The ideas are the things that are examined, not the credentials of the people sure. putting them forward. Uh, and it also gives a great deal of transparency to the problems of education and to the solutions of those problems. So. Social media has enabled the educator to get back into the national discussion on reform that was hijacked from them by business people and by politicians who, who really have no idea what they're talking about in education. By the way, we're here in a public place at FETC, so I apologize for any background noise. It's nice to be able to do something like that in, in a public place because it other is. people are actually listening to our conversation as we go on. This is true. So you, you talk about how these connected educators are six months ahead, mm -hmm. and six months nowadays it's, is a long yeah, time. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, you know, to give you a more specific example, some of the things that, that we've been talking about for two years now, um, the flipped classroom, um, yes. and, and the people who, who wrote the books on the flipped classroom, you know, John Bergman, for instance, being one of them, um, they were people who were on Twitter and they were connected educators, and, and we were talking about the very thing that he then wrote a book about, you know. When we, we go back um, five or six years when people first started using Twitter for connecting, um, many of those people uh, went from microblogging, which is what Twitter is, to blogging, and now, now they're some of the biggest authors in education. Um, wow. And, and they're still involved with Twitter. It, it, it kind of um, puts everybody on, on the same level, so you can have a Twitter conversation with, with people who are authors in the field. And, and it's something that's never been afforded teachers prior to the technology enabling that to happen. Interesting, yeah, I saw uh, Mr. Bergman. He's pretty amazing. Yes. His workshop was fantastic. Great guy. Um, what can we do to get more educators involved in that 
personal learning. Being connected. Being connected. It's, it's a difficult problem because um, our, uh, our easiest uh, access is to connected educators. And, and we sometimes think, let's just talk about connected education and everybody in the world will jump on board. Well, the only people that are jumping on board are the connected educators because sure. that's who we're getting to. We have to find um, a way to get to the un connected educator. Um, they're not people who are on Twitter. They're not people who are using Google Hangouts. They're people who uh, are watching TV, possibly reading journals, probably uh, many of them not engaging in anything um, that, that uh, moves them beyond the professional development that's delivered to them by delivered. their schools. Unfortunately, professional development being delivered by schools is not relevant professional development. The big problem with it is that uh, Oftentimes, more often than not, the school will uh, bring somebody in to talk about the bells and whistles of, of software rather than engaging the educator and saying, what is it you do with your class and, and how can technology um, be brought in to make you more efficient and more effective in accomplishing your goals? Sure, because I understand that a lot of the, the pedagogy is staying the same. Mm -hmm despite the fact that teachers are using some of the technology, I think the mindset of this um, you know, 21st century learning and critical thinking and project-based learning <clears throat> is not happening at the rate that we would like it to. Well, you know, when we talk about um, bringing technology into a classroom, we have to understand that we are teaching uh, generations of kids who are not going to live in our world. Our world, um, for educators, they, they have a choice as to whether or not to use technology um, to some extent now. Um, it has is, it is actually permeated the lives of all of us, so, so there are some things that we don't have, have choices in. But the, the kids that we're educating today are, are going to need to communicate and they're going to need to create and they're going to need to collaborate. And the very tools that our society in a computer-driven world will require them to understand um, we're not working with right. and we need to work with those tools and teach kids to use utilize those tools for creation and for communication and collaboration because that's what they will do moving sure. forward okay the the idea of of the actual hardware and software that they use will change and it's going to change at a rapid pace so we have to teach them not only to use what's existing now but be flexible enough to change as and technology relearn. changes and relearn what it is they have to relearn. These are all part of the 21st century skills that, that we talk about when we refer to 21st century skills. Tom, this is all very interesting and, and motivating and I can't wait to um, get back and share some of the wonderful ideas that I've learned here at FETC and I thank you so much. Well, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. And I it's, appreciate it. It's, it's a pleasure to be connected with somebody online and then to meet them face to face. This wonderful. connection, the idea of, of, of connecting has enabled a, a whole other level at these conferences so that you you can have a relationship with people and then actually meet them for the first time later on and it's like we're old friends we, we've known each other for a long time that's yes. exactly right uh, thank you very like, much for the opportunity thank you tom